Vital Energy, in partnership with Camden Council, is bringing a new heating scheme to the Somerstown area in Euston, central London. The project will see old communal gas boilers in four housing estates replaced with a new area-wide decentralised energy network for the future. The Francis Crick Institute has contributed £3.8 million towards the scheme. So what is a decentralised energy network? Traditionally, housing blocks either have their own shared communal boilers that provide hot water and heating to all the homes in the block or the estate, or each flat has its own individual boiler. This project creates one central energy centre and underground pipe network that provides hot water and heating to more homes more efficiently and with a lower carbon footprint. Decentralised energy is all about meeting our carbon reduction targets and it's also delivering modern, efficient and resilient heating systems to our residents at the same time. Natural gas is currently the most common fuel used to power decentralised energy networks and when joined with a technology called Combined Heat and Power, or CHP for short, it generates low carbon electricity. In the same process, heat that would be wasted is captured and used to provide heat and hot water to homes. So, what are the plans for Summerstown? The scheme will initially provide heating and hot water to four estates. Monica Shaw Court, Clyde Court, Oakshot Court and Goldington. In all, 339 homes will benefit from connection to the network. Vital Energy has been able to retrofit the energy centre into an underused car park in the basement of a mixed-use building called Phoenix Court on Brill Place. The way that it's designed, the 60s design of the building, has a lift shaft on the exterior, which we were able to use to our advantage to run the necessary flues up the side of that building. The ventilation was never designed to take plant. That all needs to be altered. Uh, the structure, uh, we've had to reinforce some of the structure, how we deliver things in and out because all we've got is, is the ramp to get things in. So the challenges of just getting stuff in here and set up, it's massive. Everything's gone back exactly as it, as it was before. So in terms of heritage, it's almost as if we haven't been there. The Energy Centre has been fitted with three brand new gas-fired boilers which will heat water to around 90 degrees, which is then pumped to the estates via a network of highly insulated underground pipes. Each estate has a heat exchanger which works with the existing central heating systems of each block to deliver heat to every resident. Here we are in uh, Oakshot and this is where the pipes enter into the building through the floor into the plant room that's next door. Next door there are three gas boilers, those will be stripped out and the plate heat exchanger will be installed. This is the heart of the operation, this is where the energy centre will be fully built and this is where all the energy will be created and distributed through the pipes you've seen to all the blocks that we've been to. The great thing about decentralised energy is the pipe network is there for 50 or 60 years once it's been put in and you can just change the source at the energy centre. So at the minute we're using gas, the next 20 or 30 years we could use whatever, whatever the next big thing is. The next phase of the project is planned for 2016-17 and would see a CHP unit installed within the same energy centre. The Francis Crick Institute, one of Europe's largest biomedical research facilities, will buy the lower carbon electricity from the CHP and the heat generated as part of this process will be passed to the housing estates. The gas boilers will supplement the CHP engine during periods of high demand, such as a cold winter day, offering residents heat and hot water on demand. A greener, more secure and efficient way. By installing a combined heat and power engine here, which produces electricity, we're actually not using grid electricity. So that's a lot more efficient, something like 80% efficient rather than a power station, which is about 40% efficient. The scheme aims to provide an energy solution with the future in mind. The pipe network can be extended to incorporate other nearby estates or organisations, and the technology within the energy centre can be upgraded to take advantage of new, low carbon technologies as they emerge in the future. Camden have looked at the surrounding area and they've, they've identified a number of buildings that could be connected to a decentralised energy scheme. Um, what we've done here is ensure that there's extra capacity in the pipe work as well as allow space for another boiler in the future so that if that does come to fruition we can serve all of those from here. And it's not just residential but we're actually looking at a potential school and some community facilities so lots of different heat demands in that study so it's a very exciting time. Camden Council wants to encourage the development of decentralised energy networks, future-proofing the way energy is provided to the borough. 
benefiting both residents and businesses alike. So we think it's the way forward in Camden because it, it allows us to revitalise these ageing communal heating systems across Camden so that they're fit for purpose for the 21st century. There'll be approximately 200 tonnes of carbon saved on the scheme and that's really because we're putting more efficient boilers in. As we go forward into the second phase with the CHP, the savings really start to rack up. Uh, approximately 65% savings on, on what's here now, so that's, that's approximately a thousand tonnes a year.